Hi guys, it's uh, Sunday morning, April 7th as I make this. Like I've announced in class and put in all the uh, announcements, we will not be having class on Monday night, April 8th. There's still gonna be some stuff you're responsible for, this video being one of them. Uh, check back, uh, ch keep checking during the week. My plan is to post, post um, videos early in the week, then a brief assignment, sort of like a daily work later in the week. All right, the topic today is recursion. If you all have had any higher math, you've probably already um, um, heard the term recursion before. Basically, recursion is, and for the, for the purpose of this class, is a function that invokes itself. So we've had functions that called functions. We did that back in CIS 114. Here in 115, we're doing recursion, which is a function that calls itself and then calls itself until a certain condition has been met. All right. The a problem I'm going to solve today is um, summing numbers from one specific number to another. All right, so for this, for both, um, I'm going to show you this, how to do it in a for loop, which you, all of you can do now. It's work from CIS 114. We're going to look at it done with a for loop, and then we're going to do with a recursive call. So I'm going to sum up the numbers of some, some of the numbers one through four by entering the end numbers one and four. All right, here's how we're going to do it with just a regular for loop. All right, I'm going to ask the user first integers. I'm going to, I declared three integers, start, finish, and sum zero. All right, then I'm going to ask the user, please enter the first, and it's got to be a lower number. For this to work, the lower number has to be first. And there's ways to work around it if they don't. Just do a swap. I think we did swap functions in CIS 114, or use conditionals to, oops, you entered the, you entered a, a higher number first, but for the purposes of this, we will just enter these correctly. We'll just enter a one for start and a four for finish. All right, the for loop will be int equals i, i equals start. So it'll start with one, while i is less than or equal to finish, and finish is going to be a four. So the first time through, it's going to be well, it, it, you know, it's going to be. Um, one is less than less than or equal to four, so it'll be um, it'll go ahead and progress. Then I plus plus. All right, inside the working area, this will be sum, which I initially said was zero, and then I'll add that sum to whatever I is. So the first time through, just just talk this through real. Sum equals zero, but we're going to assign it the value of sum, which is zero, plus I which the first time through is one. Second time through, i is going to be two. And like I just said, sum equals one. One plus two equals three. Third time through, i is going to be three. So it's going to be three plus three, which is six. Fourth time through, i is going to be four. 4 plus 6 is 10, the sum equals 10. So if I run this, this should come up 10. All right, enter a 1, enter a 4, and there's my sum of 10. So if I would have even given this to you, if, I, if you all just came in class tonight and I would have given this to you, I would have expected that you all could have written this. Like I said, this is from CIS 114, and all of you are savvy enough now to have gotten through this. All right, this is one way of writing it. The other way, and it's used a lot in computer science, is recursive calls. Let me bring that up real quick. All right, 
this will do the exact same thing that we just did. All right, this is a recursive call. If you notice, it's probably about 30% less code. Not that that's a big deal, but the recursive call is a cleaner uh, way of writing code. All right, so I'm gonna start this by just going down and starting inside the main. Again, I'm gonna use a start of one and a finish of four. I'm not gonna code these in, uh, have the user in, or I just went ahead and hard coded them in. Start is one, finish is four. So we know from the previous video that this should be 10, but I'm gonna show you how this works. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, and it's the only, actually only call from main, sum equals recursive sum, start finish. So I'm gonna send rec the, the function recursive sum, I'm gonna send it a one for start and a four for finish, all right? That's all the main does. It calls recursive sum one time and outputs it. Now recursive sum, the function that it calls, is gonna call itself over and over again until it's complete. So most of the work in this program is in the recursive sum function. All right, so keep that in mind. First time through, we're gonna send it one and four. I'm gonna go up here and put this in up here. So trying to make this a little more visual for you. Recursion is, isn't is something that's intuitive. You don't just take to it. You've got to think your way through it. Then the more you get used to it, it gets a little bit easier. All right, so recursive sum, I'm gonna send it two integers. And here's what my call from the main Senate, one and four. All right, this int m is gonna be one int n is going to be four. All right, so we start into the function. The first thing it asks, if m equals, all right, comparative operator, if m equals four, I mean, if m, if one equals four, return one. That's what this is saying. If m equals n, return m. Basically, that's if one equals four, return one. This is called, and this is important, this is actually a test question. This is called the base case, all right? This keeps this from recursive call from being infinite. It just keeps calling itself forever. This can't keep, uh, the way we write this, it's sort of like a for loop, all right? The way we treat this is eventually it will come to an end and it just doesn't keep calling itself over and over. For the first time, we send it a one and a four. One does not equal four. So we skip this and we go down to this line here. All right, this is, an important, this is the important line. This is the recursive call here. All right, so return m plus, n, m plus recursive sum m plus one n. All right, a lot going on there, but basically, we're calling recursive sum again, All right? So let's just talk about what this does. Return M plus. So M the first time two through is gonna be two plus, I'm sorry, one plus, one plus, return one plus recursive call. For the recursive call, I'm gonna, Put that as just parentheses for now. All right, one plus the recursive call. Because now it's, we have to do deal with the recursive call. So let's see what we're, we're calling rec recursive sum again. So we're gonna send it M plus one. M plus one, right now M is one. So we're gonna be sending it two and n, which doesn't change throughout this whole whole recursive um, program, n stays four. So we're gonna be sending it m plus one, which is two and four. So I'll put this up here so you can see it. We're sending it two and four. All right. Now, 
m equals 2 this time around. 4n equals 4, and it's always going to equal 4. First thing, we check our base case. Does m equal n? Nope. 2 and 4 don't equal. So now we go down to the recursive call. Okay, we're down to the recursive call. Remember, this time m equals 2 plus recursive call. So here we're going to make the call again. 2 plus the recursive call. All right. m equals 2 that's what the, where, that's where the 2 came from then the recursive call the recursive call just like before was inside the parentheses think of these parentheses as just the recursive call this is the recursive call this is the 2 and that's all we're dealing with here here's the 2 which is the m here is the recursive call which is all of this All right, we make the recursive call. Now we add the two to the one, all right? So we're gonna send it two and we're gonna send it in, which remains four. There's nothing in this function that makes it, nothing in this function that changes the n. So we're sending this one, we're sending it three and four. All right. So now m equals 3, n equals 4. We check our base case, all right? 3 does not equal 4, so we go to the recursive call again. m, which is 3, all right? Plus, all right, another recursive call. So let me point that out again on here. Three plus the recursive call. And again, we're gonna put the recursive call as just parentheses. I saw this long ago and it's the best way I can think to make this visual, all right? All right, so we're gonna go again. Okay, we're gonna send the recursive call. We're gonna send it, all right? Remember it's three, so three plus one, we're gonna send it a four. And a four, n still is four. So here's our, actually what turns out to be our final call. We're sending this four and four. Check our base case. If four equals n, uh, four equals four, if m equals n, return m. Yes, they do equal, all right? So I just return this. All right, I don't make it down to this 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 recursive call the last time. I just make it to here, and there's a four. All right, it's over. But the 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 program has to unwind and do the math. Here's what happens now. It ha it hasn't been keeping a regular total. Recursively, this pops out. So the first thing that happens is, all right. We, we look at the last one called, it kind of pops off, and now it adds to the three to the four, all right? That becomes seven, all right? It pops out of recursion, all right? It does the math, two plus seven equals nine, then the final computation that this does inside is add the one to the nine, which is 10. And that's what prints out here. C, C out sum equals recursive sum, start, finish. This is equivalent to this. All right, um, I know there's a lot going on, school's starting to wind down and stuff. If there's a video this year that I would suggest you watch twice, 
it's this one. I've made some other recursive videos in the past that I'm going to post on here. I'm going to put this as Delta Math Assignments. But I really think you need to watch this again. Um, maybe it's not the way, maybe you'll your mind will click in a way unlike what I described it. But I think you'll see what recursion is, how it just keeps calling on itself. So watch this. Uh, I'm going to make this due on Tuesday night because there's going to be some uh, competition with the uh, the eclipse and everything, which I'm going to be at. Me and my wife are plan making our uh, our itinerary right now. So I know that you're all going to be watching. I don't want to make this where you have to rush home. Guys, this video will be due by Tuesday night. Please check back on like Wednesday or Thursday. That's when you're going to have a short assignment, right? This video, so, so to recap, there'll be this video, a couple, one or two older videos, then a short assignment for later on in the week. We can't get by without doing anything this week. We can't chuck in a whole week. Um, something you all need to probably consider before you miss a Monday night class. You're not just missing uh, a class, like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. You're missing a whole week of work, all right? I'm a little bit nervous. There's been a couple misses in the last two or three weeks over material that I think you're all going to struggle with without the in-class time. So I'm going to definitely make sure that you all get plenty of recursive videos to watch so you understand this topic. Uh, the program that I make do, I will make do on Monday night, uh, late Monday night. So if there's a quick question you got to, want to ask me on Monday night, maybe I can help. Don't come into class expecting to write the whole program. It's going to be a short program, but don't come in just expecting to throw something together real quick just to get it done and in. Spend some time working on the, the program. It's in class work, so it's not a longer long program, but you need to you need to really sit down and concentrate on it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have fun at the eclipse. Hope you all have a good week. And I will see you on Monday, uh, April 15th.